Hey guys, this is Mark from Oceaholic. Today I continue my series of Z170 unboxing reviews. Um, this time we're going to have a look at the Asus Republic of Gamers Maximus 8 Hero motherboard, uh, which apparently is based on a Z170 chipset, supports the latest 6th generation Intel Core processors, codenamed Skylake. This board is SLI and Crossfire ready, supports Ultra HD and 4K display outputs on the I.O. side of things and um, it is Windows 10 ready as well. So there is a flip cover to the box and if we go on we see that um, the audio implementation appears to be rather uh, important to Asus since it comes first. So there is Asus a 2015 Supreme of X audio solution on this motherboard, which is based on their Supreme of X codec, which is actually a Re Realtek ALC 1150 working in underneath this like shield. Um, then there is an S stack ES 9023P. There is a dedicated clock generator. There are high-end Nishikon capacitors. There are RC4580 driver units. A Sonic Sense amp is there as well, and there is a Depop relay. Um, maybe you guys have like speakers connected to your system, and when you boot up your system, you hear this kind of like popping noise coming up in the background, and this relay is there to kind of like suppress this uh, this uh, popping noise. So next to the audio solution, there is a uh, Asus uh, networking implementation there is their so-called game first technology which is a software that allows you to do basically traffic shaping so if you're like downloading at the full speed of your, in for, of your internet connection at the same time gaming uh, you can make sure that the packets the, 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 the little like packets which are transported over the, the, the ethernet connector for gaming are prioritized so you don't have like or you don't suffer like uh, crappy pings uh, yeah, cool thing. Uh, apart from that, Intel, or no, not Asus, is uh, using chips from, in, LAN chips from Intel, and they improve those, those thingies with their so-called LAN guard technology that is basically additional shielding for the, the Ethernet port. Yeah, and if we go on, there is the, the experience area over here, which... Um, uh, features Keybot 2. Keybot 2 basically allows you to program macros on any USB keyboard you connect to this motherboard. So using uh, the Asus AI Soup 3 software, you can go to the Keybot tab and then program different buttons with different macros that they do. Like yeah, you can start off, you can start up your system, for instance, by by hitting Enter and stuff like that. Uh, what's also included in the delivery is ROG RAM Cache. RAM Cache is a software which allows you to dedicate a certain amount of the memory as a caching for your hard drive or SSD. So if you think like your SSD or hard drive is, uh, is not fast enough, you can, let's say, um, dedicate 4 or 8 gigabyte of memory or how much you ever want. Uh, to a RAM disk and that RAM disk will then store like the, the most frequently used uh, data from your operating system so that it makes the, the, the thing that makes your operating system or your system in general much more responsive to work with or to use it. Apart from that there is a uh, Overwolf software included as well and uh, Asus calls it a rich bundle which includes AI SU3 software, ROG CPU, Zatman, Tweaked, Kaspersky, Antivirus, Daemon Tools and Web Storage. Uh, also important with the new eight ser Maximus 8 series motherboards is the aesthetics part. Um, there is an RGB backlight on this motherboard so if you, if you want to you can choose from any color. Uh, desire to backlight the motherboard. Yeah, really nice thing. I'll show you around when I have the board in my hands. Let's first have a, a look at the back side of the of the box. Um, again, we see Supreme of X 2015 audio codec or implementation, the special lighting, Intel Ethernet thingy, and the Extreme Digi Plus 
uh, power design which is very high end or really high end on this motherboard apart from that there are additional specs I'll be talking you through these when I have the board in my hand so yeah let's get cracking and have a look at the delivery first of all as usual we put the board aside and yeah we go on with the IO shield here um, it's kind of like a dark silver it's the same shield we find with all the Asus uh, ROG motherboard looks really nice high quality some insulation yeah cool then there are six SATA cables three of them are uh, 90 degrees to straight and the other three are straight straight uh, the CPU installation tool which basically acts like a clamp you can grip the CPU like this and then hold it better to put it in the socket without uh, demolishing your your brand new motherboard uh, we have a flexible SLI bridge always nice thing to have um, then there is a screw to attach an M.2 SSD and the Q connector which allows you to to plug in all the cables that come from your case like uh, power reset and so on and so forth in a really easy manner yeah cool stuff so here we go with the manual um, we put this one aside we'll have a quick, quick look at it later on uh, yeah drivers DVD and then there are some stickers to or labels to cable labels actually to to uh, yeah, make sure you don't forget which SATA cables go go to which drive. Yeah, cool stuff. The door hanger, which is always like a cool idea. Asus have been the first one to introduce this, and now every other vendor is copying it. Uh, on one side it says game on, you shall not pass, and on the other side it says game off, you may enter. Yeah, cool thing. Then there are some more ROG stickers, three of them actually. Also, they, they also look very nice. And yeah, as I said, a quick look at the uh, manual, actually at the storage specs, because there is something that's always interesting to know about the SATA ports and the M.2 slot. So in this case, if you plug in an M.2 uh, device, so when the M.2 socket 3 is operating in SATA mode, SATA ports 1 and 2 will be disabled. So yeah, basically if you if you install a SATA drive and you plug it in to your SATA 1 and 2 connectors make sure there is no M.2 SSD in your on your motherboard because otherwise those SATA ports will be disabled important to know so let's put the box aside and continue with the motherboard itself let's grab the thingy out of the box and yeah here we go. As always, I shut up for a few seconds so you can have a look at the thing uh, without me talking. Okay, enough silence for today. As you can see, um, Asus decided to rework the, the color scheme on their ROG base motherboard. It's less uh, black and red it's more a combination I mean it's still black and red but it's more a combination of like uh, uh, different shades of, of black and gray and some red um, apart from that yeah there is the black matte PCB there are aluminium based um, heat sinks all over the board like you have one on the PCH and uh, one covering the VRM area which is connected with a six millimeter flat heat pipe um, yeah, and what's really cool with these blocks is that they do reflect like the, the color of the light you, you have. In this case, I mean, it's apparently white, so you see them with a, a white-ish shade. But if you decide to use the backlight of the, of the motherboard and, is, for example, set it to, to blue, then these, these blocks, they, they shine in like, in like a, a bluish tone. So, yeah, let's see. So, let's have a look at the audio implementation as we can find it here underneath the shroud uh, there is a nice little cover uh, which says supreme effects as i said already uh, it's asus latest implementation for the audio solution it features a supreme of x chip which is based on a realtac alc 1150 codec here we have the nishikon uh, high-end capacitors then there is the depop relay and underneath somewhere here 
is that S stack I've been talking about as well. Um, here we have the front audio connector and what's also interesting to know is that like the audio solution which is below here has been separated from the rest of the motherboard by a backlit trace. Um, actually this serves like two purposes as I said the backlight as well as separating the, the audio solution from the rest of the board for less signal interference. Here you can see the very small dots maybe you can spot them those are the SMD LEDs, which are there for the backlight. Um, yeah, continuing with the PCI slots, we find three PCI Express X1 Gen 3 slots. Then there are the full-sized uh, PCI Express Gen 3 slots. They're all, uh, there are only Gen 3 slots on SAT 170-based motherboards. Um, the first one of them has been wired using 16 lanes, the second one uses 8 lanes and the third one also uses 8 lanes. As you can see from the back side here, you see the, the full amount of uh, a wiring down to the first slot and then the half the amount and half the amount on the second and the third uh, Gen 3 slots. And here apparently the X1 slots. Um, yeah, if we continue with uh, additional slots, there is an M.2 socket, uh, which can also be populated with a U.2 adapter. This one is not included in the in the delivery. You have to buy this one separately if you want to buy a brand new NVMe-based um, SSD. Uh, but yeah, the thing is 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 ready for the latest and greatest in technology, and yeah, always good to have. Uh, if we continue on the storage side, we find two SATA Express ports and four additional SATA 6 gigabit ports. So as I said, if you use an M.2 drive down here, uh, the first two SATA ports will be disabled. So make sure that if you use an M.2, don't use these for your like, uh, yeah, to plug in your hard drives or additional SSDs and stuff. Um, yeah, where do we continue? Yeah, down here. So we have a start button and a reset button and a clear CMOS button down here. A front header, another front header for the audio, then a header for a TPM module, headers for the ROG external panel. Then there is a USB 2.0 header here, also for your front connectors for your case. Uh, USB 3.0. A connector also for front USB ports and here is another one so in total you can like supply four front ports from your from your case with USB uh, 3.0 connectivity uh, apart from that there is a four pin fan headed down here and here you plug in your Q connector to easily um, yeah, attach all the wires for like power reset and so on and so forth um, yeah continuing We've already been talking about the PCH cooler down here. Uh, yeah, USB 3.0 as I mentioned. Another 4-pin fan header, the ATX power plug, then another 4-pin fan header. Uh, talking about fan headers, we find another one 4-pin here and another 3 up here. So in total, that makes 3, 4, 5, uh, 6 fan headers if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2. Four. No, it's seven. Uh, they're all uh, four pins, so you can uh, regulate your fans from within Windows or BIOS, the rotation speeds, I mean. And here you have a special connector, which is uh, labeled W pump, water pump, actually. So if you own a uh, an all-in-one water cooler, you plug the pump in here, and then you get like a, a wider range to control the... the uh, the rotation speeds of your of your pump. Um, yeah, if we go on, there are two phases uh, which back up or support the the memory. One phase per dim channel. Uh, it's definitely enough even to do like a very very decent uh, memory overclocking. Overclocking. Uh, there is a debug light here, a memo OK button here. Also a very nice thing if you run into compatibility issues with your memory. Uh, about these little buggers I've been talking already or EPS uh, 12 volt 8 pin connector to supply additional power to the power design and then to the CPU. Um, 
yeah talking about a little bit more about the power design we find a total of 10 phases here uh, the phases are really high end there are black metallic chokes for every single phase um, and if we flip it to the back side we see these um, metal reinforcement plates which also cover um, additional power chips from uh, international rectifier down here so the overall uh, power design is really high end it's definitely sufficient even for extreme overclocking talking about extreme overclocking the hero has always been known as a good bu budget alternative uh, uh, to start with extreme overclocking and so and it's still the same with this board so this board is not just targeted at gamers it's also targeted at extreme overclockers and uh, yeah apparently uh, other overclockers as well so yeah here you can see the shroud again which is covering the io connectors um, in that case we find four usb 3.0 ports as well as four usb 3.1 ports there is one type c connector and three type a connectors this is the rog flashback um, connector so you can plug in a usb device only plug in the power and then you can already like flash your board to the latest bias version without having the cpu memory and everything else installed really cool stuff uh, then there is an hdmi output a display port output there is the intel gigabit lan interface there is the analog audio connectors as well as the digital optical out for your sound so i think that's been it with my unboxing review video on the maximus 8 hero motherboard i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was very interesting and yeah as always don't forget to hit the like button um, if you can share it and subscribe to our channel thank you very much for watching see you next time bye bye